Well, welcome back to the Bio 180 lecture series. Today, we are going to be continuing our exploration of Unit 5, which is cell processes. And this unit is divided up into three major sections. So we have membrane transport, and then we have cell signaling as a, uh, as a cellular process, and then cell division. And within each one of those divisions, we have several lectures. So we've been working on membrane transport, and we've gone over diffusion and osmosis. We've gone over protein-mediated transport. So today, we're gonna to be covering vesicle-mediated transport. This will be our third and final lecture for this section. And so what I'd like to do first is start out with an overview illustration of the processes of cellular transport, and then we'll do a review and look at it a little bit differently as a table of these processes and compare and contrast them. So, as we get started, let's vesicle mediated transport is going to be a way of getting things that are too large, like proteins or large macromolecules, into and out of the cell and they can't go through individual proteins like we covered the last time on protein media transport. So we're going to need vesicle trafficking in order to move them in and out or across the plasma membrane. So to start with, let's draw a large cell. And so here is a, a basic model of a cell. We're going to take and just give us a few organelles just for orientation. So here's my nucleus. We're going to put it here on the side. And we will be talking about the Golgi a little bit later. So I'm going to draw a Golgi apparatus. And we'll draw a lysosome over here too. And those are the main organelles that we're going to involve. Now, when we talk about vesicle mediated transport, there's really about four process, well, two main processes that we're going to be talking about. One of them is endocytosis. And this is movement into the cell. And endocytosis, we're going to further divide or separate into three different categories. One of them is going to be phagocytosis. The other one is going to be pinocytosis. And then the third one will be what we call receptor-mediated endocytosis. And then, in opposition to endocytosis, is going to be exocytosis. And so exocytosis is the export or movement out of the cell. And so exocytosis, a lot of times, is used for export of uh, protein products or cell signal factors. And so things, for example, insulin is secreted by certain pancreatic cells. So insulin is actually a protein that leaves those cells secreted through exocytosis and then that insulin is able to enter into the bloodstream. So exocytosis is a way of moving some kind of protein product or uh, some kind of cell signal factor outside of the cell. Endocytosis is usually a way of bringing nutrients into the cell in different forms. And so as we go forward, we'll talk about a couple different examples of that. Up on the model here, we have some, we're going to illustrate some different uh, examples of this. And so we're going to start on this side over here with a process called phagocytosis. 
So in phagocytosis, you have the membrane right here. This would be the original plane of the membrane. And you can see there's these two extensions coming uh, off of that plasma membrane. And these extensions are referred to as pseudopodia. And they are created by the polymerization. So there's a protein, fibers. You've actually already learned about this protein. This is actin. And so you have this actin was a protein that's found in the cytoskeleton of these cells. And so you have actin that will polymerize at the base of the pseudopodia. And they extend outward. And as the actin polymerize on this end, they're going to push outward on that plasma membrane. And that creates these extensions. And the idea of these extensions is to go out and surround some kind of particle, like it might be a bacteria or some kind of particle. And then they will surround it, and then eventually they will wrap around and enclose that particle. Like that, and that is phagocytosis. So the idea here is that the plasma membrane is going to extend outward, wrap around some kind of particle out there like bacteria, and then pull that back into the cell. Now, uh, phagocytosis actually is mediated by, so there's receptors on the outside of the cell, and that determines where phagocytosis happens. So it doesn't happen all the time. But there will be receptors out here that are designed to recognize bacteria or some kind of foreign object. And those are the things that get brought into the cell. So phagocytosis doesn't happen all the time. It's regulated by things binding to these receptors that then will initiate the formation of the pseudopodia and the initiation of phagocytosis. So that's our first process, phagocytosis. The next process, we will come over here and talk about pinocytosis. Now, even though pinocytosis, we'll represent that right here, pinocytosis and phagocytosis are both bringing things into the cell. So it's a form of endocytosis. But pinocytosis has a different mechanism. Again, if here's the the original plane of the membrane, in penocytosis, instead of pushing outward like we did on the membrane in phagocytosis, we're going to take a portion of the membrane and pull it inward. So penocytosis is an inward-directed process. And what happens is we will have, right here on the surface of the membrane, we'll have kind of a curved, curve-shaped protein known as clathrin. And so clathrin will come and bind to the membrane, and as it does so, it sucks that membrane down into it, and it forms, starts to form a bubble. And as these clathrins start to get together and hook up, they actually allow this large uh, bud to form, is what we call it. And so we'll use that as the membrane hooks onto or folds into that clathrin skeleton that's formed, it forms a vesicle. And so eventually, this vesicle will break off of the plasma membrane. And so we form this transport vesicle. And then the clathrin coat still surrounds it. And eventually, its purpose is to fuse into the lysosome. So these incoming vesicles are usually destined to fuse into the uh, lysosome. Before it does that, we have to break off that clathrin coat so that the two membranes of the lysosome and the vesicle can touch each other. So that would be penocytosis. Over here, we'll illustrate receptor-mediated endocytosis.
And receptor-mediated endocytosis is going to be very similar. We're still going to have some clathrin coats that are designed to form that vesicle, so we're using the same clathrin. The one difference is that in this case, as its name implies, the formation of those vesicles is mediated by receptors. So again, we're going to have receptors on the surface of the cell. And those receptors are designed to bind onto certain cargo particles. So in this case, we're going to use receptors to concentrate some kind of specific cargo. And the vesicle will only form when cargo is present. So cargo originally will bind to those receptors on the outside. And when we get enough of that cargo binding, then the cell will form a receptor and bring that in. So there's different things that we have. There's about 25 or so known cargo receptors that engage in receptor-mediated endocytosis. And they bring in a couple of common ones. Cholesterol, for example, has a cargo receptor that will specifically mine cholesterol out of the extracellular matrix. And then iron will also be scavenged and has a specific receptor that will pull iron out of the extracellular uh, areas. And so that's going to be receptor-mediated endocytosis. The fate is the same as penocytosis. These receptors, or the, uh, the bud will form a vesicle that has a clathrin coat around it. And then the ultimate fate of these is often going to be fusing into the lysosome. Again, to do that, we have to remove that clathrin coat from the outside so that we can get the membrane touching onto the lysosome and fuse those membranes together. So that's going to be our three forms of endocytosis, phagocytosis, penocytosis, and receptor-mediated endocytosis. Now, on the other side of things, we have exocytosis. And so we're going to illustrate exocytosis over here. And so exocytosis is going to involve the same process, which is that of vesicle budding and then vesicle fusion. Now, in this case, though, we're going to start over here at the... Golgi apparatus. We're going to start it in the same way that we did elsewhere. This bud is going to form now on the end of the Golgi apparatus. It also has to form by using a clathrin coat. So this uses the same protein as we did in endocytosis to form that bud. So our vesicle now is coated with clathrin. It then fuses here with the plasma membrane. And so we'll again remove that clathrin coat. And that allows it to, I'll go ahead and show a little bit on this one. What will happen with vesicle fusion is that vesicle will travel down here to the surface of the plasma membrane. And then first, the cytosolic leaflets of those two, uh, of the plasma membrane and the vesicle, will start to fuse, and then the two will fuse together. And so now, whatever kind of cargo you had in here, in the vesicle, will now be able to leave and export to the outside of the cell. And so that's going to be exocytosis. So this is an overview of sort of those different endocytotic and exocytotic processes. Now what I'd like to do is come over on this board and just do a review of some of the features of those processes and compare and contrast them using a table. So... 
we're going to look over here on our table. We're going to talk about the process itself. So that's going to be phagocytosis and pinocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis. And then we'll also talk about exocytosis at the bottom. And so we'll start to define these by sort of their direction. their process. We'll look at the main proteins involved. We'll look at their regulation. and their distribution. Okay. So as we start to look at some of these categories, when we look at phagocytosis, here we're really talking about things coming in from the plasma membrane. And they are ultimately headed toward the lysosome. Now, phagocytosis forms, we'll put a special word in here, intermediate, and we'll call it a vacuole. Because in phagocytosis, the things that we bring into the cell are going to be really big. So they'll be the, reach the size of what we'll call a vacuole rather than a vesicle. And so we've got lysosomes with a vacuole intermediate in between those. The process right here is going to be an outward process. Remember, we're bending the plasma membrane outward. We refer to that as extrusion of the membrane. We're extruding it or pushing it outward. And the main protein involved with this we saw was actin, that cytoskeleton filament that would polymerize and push up against the membrane. We saw that this was regulated. So this is meaning that it's only on or only happens when things contact those receptors. So it is regulated. And then this distribution, what do we mean by this? What we mean is not all cells will actually undergo phagocytosis. These are specialized cells that tend to go uh, and do phagocytosis. So for us, we're going to just use the term primarily in the body. This is your white blood cells. And there's different types of white blood cells that do this. But most of the cells in your body do not undergo phagocytosis. Our next process, as we move on, is going to be pinocytosis. Pinocytosis is the same direction. In fact, all of these endocytoses are going to be the same direction. So we're going to go from the plasma membrane to the lysosome. These are small enough that we would just call them vesicles. Now here the process though is different. So this is an inward pulling of the membrane to inside the cell. And so we call this, the technical term for it, is an invagination of the membrane. The primary protein involved with this is Clathrin, and again, so that's that sort of cup-shaped protein that can polymerize together in the cell and form uh, like a soccer ball-like cage. Regulation for pinocytosis is another big word. It's called constitutive, which means that it's simply ongoing or not regulated. And so a constitutive process inside the cell, when we talk about that in biology, 
is just a process that more or less happens all the time at the same constant rate. And its distribution, this is very common, both in terms of how often it occurs and in what cell types it occurs. So all cell types, and really we said it was constitutive, so all the time. And this is a way by which cells can uh, sample the extracellular fluid or what's out there and bring any nutrients that are floating around in that extracellular fluid. Receptor-mediated endocytosis is really going to be the same as pinocytosis. So I'm just going to put a couple of indentation marks to just tell you it's the same there, it's the same there, it's the same there. However, in this, it's different because now it's obviously receptor-mediated and so it's regulated by whether those receptors are carrying cargo or not. And then this is also common. Okay, although different cells might scavenge different things depending on the types of receptors that they place on the surface of their cell. Finally, let's get back and talk about exocytosis here on the bottom. Under exocytosis, now we've been always going from the plasma membrane, forming a vesicle, that vesicle is then fusing with the lysosome in each one of these cases. Now we start to see something a little bit different in that in exocytosis, we're going to form that membrane at the Golgi apparatus. And then it is going to travel to the plasma membrane. It again, it doesn't seem like it, but it's the same process. It's an inward pulling of that membrane into the cytosol of the cell or invagination. In fact, the formation of the vesicle in exocytosis is identical, or the process of forming that vesicle is identical in exocytosis as it is in pinocytosis. So we're going to put clathrin here. Uh, exocytosis is has both, there's two different mechanisms. One of them is ongoing, so there is constitutive exocytosis, and then there is also a regulated form, and we often refer to that as secretion. So there is a regulated version, and this is common. Most cells will undergo some form of exocytosis. And so that gives you a comparison of those different processes. Notice that in many cases, they are the same. So they have quite a few things in common. So for example, these areas are all the same, but usually in each category, there's at least one thing that's different. So phagocytosis itself is quite different. So here, these are all the same. Notice here we've got receptor, receptor, and then right here, the same. So it's not like you have to memorize uh, every little piece. If you know some of the elements on it, they repeat for some of the other types of the processes. Overall, that's an overview then. We've given you an illustration of, physical, of vesicle mediated transport on the far board. And then we went through and reviewed again each one of those processes, just identifying and comparing and contrasting some of the different elements. And that's going to be our video for today. We're going to wrap up vesicle mediated transport and then come back. Next time we'll start about, talk about cell signaling. And this will be uh, a fairly complex topic, so we'll spend some time on that. Until then, we'll see you next time.